Bill, your, your next and penultimate object is a paperweight, but it is a picture of Stonehenge. What is it that you like about Stonehenge, and is it the obvious mystery of it? Well, it's, it's, not, just, it's not just Stonehenge. It's, it's um, the, the, the antiquity of Britain and the, and, the, and the abundance of antiquity everywhere, the fact that there's so much. I mean, coming as I do from a young nation, I, I'm just constantly, even now after all these decades, bowled over by just how much there is. I did a, a, a little calculation, and if you, um, if you made it your hobby, starting now, to, to visit just the medieval parish churches in England, and you decided to do one new one a week for, the, for as long as it took, do you have any idea how long it would take? It would take 308 years to see them all. If you tried to do just the archaeological sites, it would take you 11,500 years to do them all. Uh, that's just the known ones now. It's more presumably would be discovered in the interval. Um, and, but there's just that richness of stuff, the fact that there's just so much everywhere. I, 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 I absolutely love that, the idea that wherever you are in the, in the country, you just stumble across things that in where I come from, in Iowa, people would really travel hundreds of miles to see. I, I mean, if you had a thing like Stonehenge in Iowa, I, believe me, everybody you know, would travel from all over to see it. You have a job to explain to them how it got there, of course. But, <laughs> but, um, it, but you know, anything, any medieval object would be just venerated. And here, all these parish churches are completely taken for granted because there's so many of them. It's both a curse and a blessing because one of the problems is that because you do have so much in Britain, people do tend to take them for granted. And so when things get knocked down or swept away, uh, they tend not to be lamented as they might be in, in a younger country. So do you feel that you are the unofficial curator of all of this to show us the way? I, well, I've actually, if you're asking, seriously, I feel as if I'm unofficially in charge of the whole planet. Wow. <laughs> but, no, but I mean, don't we all do that? I'll vote don't for you. you. Everybody, don't you go through life thinking, you know, they really ought to put me in charge of everything because, you know, I really think I would do a better job of it than they're doing. Yeah, fair. Uh, if you could offer one piece of advice to American tourists visiting the UK, what would it be? Learn, learn that it's not Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, actually, the thing is, I think the thing for a lot of Americans is, would be just to, you know, don't expect it to be America. Don't, you know, just relax and try and just allow it to sweep over you. I had uh, genuinely, when we were living in New Hampshire, Quite a, I thought, quite a sophisticated next door neighbor, worldly, and they'd gone on a cycling holiday. They'd gone from, I think it was from Vienna to Prague. And all he talked about was the, how much power they had in the showers every morning. And I just thought, Did, is that really what was important to you? And it, clearly it was. So I think there's a tendency among Americans, I mean, I've seen this with my own family, my parents when they used to come here, of just trying to replicate American conditions wherever they were here. And obviously that's... That's, there's no point in traveling if, you, if that's all you want to do.